They've been outflanked by Joe Biden from the right on immigration and they can't pass any bill and now they just have to keep going oh joe biden doesn't want to do anything and then people go didn't you weren't you guys the one that shot down the most conservative immigration bill to ever hit congress in the last 30 years and they go uh it's crazy this is a story that i've been looking at for quite a little while but i haven't talked about yet mostly because i was looking to gather up a lot of resources to be able to bring it to you all and i think i'm finally there and it's very interesting so as you all may understand we got a lot of lefties here a lot of leftists here all this type of stuff all these types of people you weirdos freaks even some of you we live in a pretty conservative country uh, at least among our sister nations and a pretty conservative country uh, in, in a lot of in a lot of ways. One of the ways is when it comes to immigration. Now, immigration usually isn't that big of an issue for people. It's usually pretty low on the list of things that people care about, but it's pretty high on the list that conserv that conservatives care about, the Republican Party specifically. Uh, Donald Trump was the immigration president, and one of his big problems is that people just generally didn't care that much about the border. It, it just wasn't that big of a problem. The border usually isn't that big of a problem, even though a lot of people do su really uh, support a lot of pretty conservative immigration measures that I think are bad personally, but still get a decent amount of support if they were to be popular. Unfortunately, under Joe Biden, Republicans got exactly what they wanted, and it has become very popular. Actually, one of the most popular issues in the country right now, even beating crime and the economy. The usual, the usual drumming about the non-existent massive crime wave sweeping the country, even as crime rates continue to fall year after year and decade compared to other decades, that has fallen. Even the economy has fallen. Things like gas prices and savings have fallen. Food prices have fallen below the worry that people have about them Mexicans and whatnot and them other Latin exes, as a, a political writer would say crossing the god dang border all right and this is something that the republicans knew that they were going to uh have a w on because this is one of their massive things that they drum beat on now it's usually not that big of a problem but it has gotten really bad for the democrats as they usually don't pull that well when it comes to who's best at protecting the border or defending the nation from the demons who cross from uh, the Rio Grande or whatever, right? And all of this is happening, and this is why, and I hope you watched that video, some of you didn't, and you really do need to, it's very important, that video that we did on why Greg Abbott and like 26 other uh, Republican governors uh, were sending troops to the border and defending Greg Abbott when it comes to defying the Supreme Court, and why i was waiting for joe biden to say something about it but he has said literally nothing okay I i'm still waiting for joe biden to say something about texas and all the republicans defying the supreme court and literally raising an army against him uh to be able to stop him from saving children from drowning in the rio grande but he hasn't said anything and the reason is because of this the reason is because of this when it comes to each of the following which party do you think would do a better job uh, dealing with border security republicans at 50 percent of the country dealing with crime republicans at 50 percent the economy 49 percent Im immigration 45 uh constitu protecting constitutional rights uh 43 these these are usually things some of these things are really big uh usually when it comes to republicans um but not all the time right but this is something that's really gotten this is something that's gotten really big and conservatives have been uh using it to get things from joe biden things like one of the most conservative immigration bills to ever exist outside like pat like after the like chinese exclusion act joe biden has decided joe biden and an, and a team of bipartisan uh, legislatures, and that means one Democrat, Kristen Cinema, and a Republican were spending months since October crafting one of the most conservative immigration bills to ever exist to placate people who who believe that now immigration is a big problem and they want it to be dealt with and joe biden was perfectly fine going really hard right with his bill i you may think that i'm just saying hard right because i'm some super big lefty um i'm not just saying that okay i it, 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 that's not true 
Actually, Republicans believe that this is one of the most far right bills that they've been able to to bring to the floor with any sort of seriousness. And they were genuinely like jumping with joy by having a bill like this. So let's walk through what this bill was, um, because it's it's actually really important because even Lindsey Graham heralded one of the one of the sloppiest Trump gaggers to exist. All right. One of the sloppiest to exist uh, to those who think that President Trump wins, uh, which I hope he does, that we can get a better deal. You won't. This is Lindsey Graham talking about a bill that Joe Biden sponsored. OK, probably one of once again, one of the most far right bills that we've been able to get. Even Donald Trump with a trifecta, he believes that he wouldn't be able to even get a better bill through Congress. That should tell you something. That's not just me yapping about this. So let's walk a little bit through the bill. These are these are screenshots that I took from uh, PBS, but I'm going to go through them for you all, for you guys to just talk about a little bit. OK, this bill will overhaul the asylum system. This is ma basically what the bill is about. Joe Biden has already started to turn away at the border. A lot of black and brown um, people who come to the border seeking asylum. If you are from uh, Haiti, uh, for example, you're just not allowed at the border. If you're from um, uh, El Salvador, you're just not allowed at the border. If you come by and you're like, I'm, I'm from El Salvador, I'm from Haiti, some other countries as well. He, you just, they just say, fuck you, period. We don't care what's happening to you. You get turned away at the border. You don't deserve to seek asylum. Um, here, period. Doesn't doesn't matter what you're already going through. So it's going to get even worse uh, in that regard. Right. Um, it also allows for the entire border, one of the largest land borders with a singular country in the entire world and one of the largest in, 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 um, in, in the Americas to just be almost unilaterally closed by Homeland Security. So the secretary can just the secretary and the executive can just straight up close the border with this bill put through. Just say nobody's crossing the border period, the entire border is shut down. The bill would also had $60 billion for Ukraine and 10 uh, for, in military aid to Ukraine, $14 billion for, to continue Israel's genocide of Palestinians. Um, and it also had uh, $10 billion for Palestinians to possibly get some water. And they were just going to cross their fingers, hoping that Netanyahu and um, Israelis weren't going to stop the trucks from getting into Gaza. And that's basically what what was in this bill. They didn't put down the Ukrainian. They didn't put down the amount that was going to go to Palestinians. Once again, a lot of mainstream media simply just does not care or think that they're real human beings. So they didn't even, they didn't even write that shit down on this, on this one. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. And there are people saying they were a radical left country. Right, 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 right. Totally. So, so true. So true. A new emergency authority by the Department of Homeland Security uh, immediately deport most migrants that get encountered at the border. Right. So basically what this is, if there's more than five thousand, if there's more than a certain amount of migrants that are coming that are encountered at the border, then it then it automatically triggers an emergency proceeding that shuts down the border and turns away all of the migrants from being at the border and being able to seek asylum once again, which is a international right that we're simply just denying hundreds of thousands of people for political reasons. But that's that, that's just how it goes. And it can. And then there's a grace period of another 4000 migrants per day that get encountered at the border that they cannot trigger that. But there is a mandatory trigger for turning away uh, most migrants and and deporting most migrants that they get encountered at the border if this bill were to pass. Right. And it immediately deports most of the migrants that are encountered at the border for whatever reason, period. That's just kind of it. Uh, moving on a little bit, there's they they want to uh, for the people who do get in, they want, quote, tougher uh, they want tougher, clear and convincing standard. So basically what this means is that you need to provide a super, a super in-depth, a serious and, and incredibly visible that you can't, that there's no if, ands or buts about it for you to be able to like beyond a reasonable doubt that you need asylum, not just more likely than not, um, which is kind of like what we have right now. Um, that type of standard that would almost instantly kick out even the small amount of uh, migrants that were going to be able to seek asylum at the border already. So even a fraction of those that that got past the incredibly strict laws that they would be put on under in this would then be cut down again and the rest would be deported 
if they if they couldn't basically provide a video of somebody trying to kill them okay and all of this would go through new asylum officers who would um who would judge this and not judges and so to understand this basically what they're saying is that they're denying people the right to a jury like a judge like denying people the right for a court to hear their case they're stopping people from going to courts instead of like beefing up immigration courts and allowing more judges to be on immigration courts to hear people's cases to argue to actual judges there's just going to be asylum officers they're just going to be some guy who has no but who has no past experience with like human rights law or anything they just be some guy and you have to hope that he's in a good mood that day for that one guy to tell you that you can you can like have safe harbor in the united states and not just be killed right that's that's just that's just what it is they just completely remove the right for you to have a judge um hear your case period and also they they saw phoenix right attorney at law and thought that that was a great way to uh, to have a, a legal system and so not only are there not judges but you basically have a couple days to adjudicate your case well i can't say adjudicate because there's no judges there's no justice system right there, you have like a couple days to argue your case maximum uh 180 days and in, in most cases it would be far shorter maybe they would want to kick them out in hours in days um and and get it like and, and, and get it put through in that time without actually making the system better just quicker which means it's worse and that's basically what was in this bill basically the right to shut completely shut down the border no just so you know and you may be wondering nothing here is about dreamers nothing here is about dreamers and their pathway to citizenship nothing here is about a broad pathway to citizenship for people who are in the country already nothing is here um about like voting rights and nothing is here about people getting onto assistance services and getting and being able to participate in society in in like a real way who are already here contributing in our society but under the table now nothing is here about this this is why conservatives think that this is a fantastic bill because there's nothing like that in here it's basically everything that they want without having to trade there was no compromise here in this bill it was like how can we over migrants as much as possible and then they ask themselves how can we do it even harder and that was the immigration bill that got pushed through but the problem for conservatives is that it's a couple steps short of just killing the migrants in general right they hate it a lot of the really really super duper hard right conservatives hate it, and which uh, made it hard for this bill to pass um was that they were allowing any migrants in at all and they weren't shutting asylum down period and there was no like mass deportation in the bill in general as well so even in even in this case where they got like the the most crazy mind you the most crazy bill like they, they couldn't get this under un, under obama they couldn't get this under like bush they couldn't get this under lots of people who are well they couldn't get this under trump they couldn't get this under lots of pres like Republican presidents even who knew who made it their thing to be like crazy hard on the border. They couldn't get it under them, but they got it under Biden. And so that's why they and that's why they were really pushing for this bill, because it's everything that they wanted. They were able they were able to have the country at their back by having it be a really large issue at the moment. And then they were also able to get to uh, to get a bill with almost no compromises in it from a democratic president and they and obviously all the democrats are going to almost all the democrats are going to be at his back because being for the president and kind of like hand waving this issue away for now was way better than tackling it and doing something more difficult for those for those democrats and so they were just perfectly fine passing this type of bill dangerous dangerous stuff and this is so we would like doom and gloom and talk about how terrible things are and how many people are going to die because of this and with, and that's not even talking about how it's giving 14 billion dollars in military aid to israel that already has killed killed over 20,000 innocent Palestinians and tens of thousands of innocent children. And it has just been indiscriminately, in Biden's words, bombing in, in a complete area, eviscerating and leading to one of the largest starvation um, and famine outbreaks in the entire world right now. Outside of that being talked about, because we're not even talking about that yet, necessarily. This bill is just terrible. Absolutely horrible. Horrible bill. Now, one thing that's good in the bill is the 60 billion dollars for you uh, for ukraine ukraine is still in desperate need 
of aid. And this bill would have aid for Ukraine and a decent amount of it. And they do need this aid desperately. But then you have to ask yourself, now it's being pitted against, this is why they put this in the bill. Now it's being pitted against a large amount for Ukraine and a relatively paltry amount for Palestinians that may not even make it into Gaza and the West Bank. And on top of that, now we have to, now they have to make you think, are, is it, is it worth trading Palestinian lives for Ukraine to be able to still have a fight in recapturing their land and stop the, um, one of the largest imperialism in, endeavors, um, colonial imperialist endeavors in Europe for, since for, for like almost a hundred years, right? Is, is that worth it? Is it worth trading Palestinian lives for maybe even Ukrainian, uh, Ukrainian lives, right? What's, what's the balance here? Who should die? That's basically the question they want you to ask and choose who you think that, who you think should die in, in this, because once again, Palestinians are going to suffer more with the eight, with the four, with the 16, what, 14, with the $14 billion given to Ukraine than the 10 billion that may even possibly get into Gaza um, that gets managed by uh, Israel um, after they after they shut down UN peacekeeping and anti-famine and, and health services in in Gaza, in Gaza for Israel's false and uh, the false claims that uh, the people working there in the UN were all um, terrorists who love who who are human swastikas and throw themselves at um, Israeli babies and eat them um, uh, ass up or something right and yet if this passes you'll still uh literally get republicans going biden wants to give your house to a mexican <laughs> family and husband and have the uh, husband and have babies yeah the uh, mexican family and have the husband have babies with your wife right right but that's actually the funny thing about it is that when this happened that's that actually would happen when this dropped ted cruz actually came out to say that exact same thing the Biden border crisis is an absolute humanitarian disaster, and Democrats don't care. Last year, 853 migrants died crossing illegally into this country. Alejandro Mayorkas didn't even know how many had died because he didn't care. When I brought 19 senators down to the border, we saw a man who had drowned floating in the Rio Grande. Democrats don't care. Mind you, Republicans are the ones that are putting up barriers on the border and not letting Border Patrol save people who are drowning in the river. <laughs> Last year, thousands upon thousands of children were brutalized and sexually assaulted by human traffickers, and Democrats don't care. Last year, thousands of women were sexually assaulted by human traffickers, and Democrats do not give a damn. So, basically, you would imagine that with this type of speech, Democrats don't care. But the craziest thing about it is that Republicans are the ones that killed the bill. Republicans killed border bill. A sign of Trump's strength and McConnell's waning influence. Apparently, Republicans don't care. In one of the most far-right immigration bills to ever hit Congress, past the Chinese Exclusion Act, Republicans killed the bill. They killed it. They absolutely, they 100% killed it because it wasn't crazy enough. You weren't able to shoot migrants. You do, they, they didn't just deport everyone. They killed it again absolutely incredible stuff and one of the big reasons why they kill it and why they said it was trump whose strength did it was because of posts like this i do not think we should do a border bill at all unless we get everything needed to shut down the invasion of millions of millions of people many from parts unknown into our once great but soon to be great again country <laughs> uh because he was like, I was wondering what he was going to run on. Was it going to be make America great again, again? But I guess it's going to be make America was great, but now it's bad, but it will be great again. Um, that's what he's running on, I guess. Make America great twice this time. Make America superb. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> With this being said, all right. Also, I have no doubt that our wonderful House Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, will only make a deal that is perfect on the border. Remember, without strong borders and honest elections, we don't have a country. So when Donald Trump truthed this, when 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 he when he truthed the hell out of this, um, Republicans were like, "Ah, shit, we can't pass a border bill," and the real reason is because they don't want to fix this problem before the election. They don't want to pass a bill 
that would would that would satisfy and placate a lot of Americans for this issue because they don't want it to they don't want this issue to be dealt with at all. They don't want Democrats to be able to have a win before Donald Trump has the chance to get into office again. That's literally the reason. That's it's, it's crazy. So basically, they were trying to do the same thing when it came to held, holding up Merrick Garland seat when Obama was leaving office with Biden, but moving into a midterm election where keep a problem going, keep a wound open, not pass any bill, even like a more left wing bill, more right wing bill. No bill, no bill will pass, period, as long as Donald Trump is still running for the election or a Republican is running for the election and they can make it a an issue because as long as it's an issue and they win on the issue, they think that they could win indefinitely. It's It seemed like an ingenious plan that might just work. It didn't. It didn't work. It didn't work at all. And what happened is that the massive division within the Re Republican Party here allowed crazy, I know, allowed Joe Biden and the Re and the Democrats to outflank the Republicans from the right on over migrants to the point where the the idea of it shifted from Joe Biden not doing anything to solve the border crisis to Republicans being the one that hold up the border crisis because Joe Biden started parroting Donald Trump saying he wants to shut down the border and turn away all these dirty migrants because they make us dirty poor dirtier poorer and more divided and and now the Republicans are left sitting there holding their dick because they don't know what to do anymore they've been outflanked by Joe Biden from the right on immigration and they can't pass any bill and now they just have to keep going um Joe Biden doesn't want to do anything and then people go didn't you weren't you guys the one that shot down the most conservative immigration bill to ever hit congress in the last 30 years and they go uh it's crazy it's genuinely crazy it blows my mind it's it's really remarkable we can read like a little bit of this Within 48 hours of the release of the long-awaited immigration bill, uh, immigration aid bill, he had championed Senate uh, Minority Leader Mitch McConnell's Republican conference rejected a pitch to support it. Just four Republicans voted for it in the end. Even McConnell backtracked and voted against the package that he helped develop. And the reason is because Donald Trump said, don't vote for it because I want to run on this issue. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy how much, how, how, how 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 like Trump pussy whip these guys are. Biden actually called their bluff. I wouldn't say called their bluff. Biden was 100% will. Biden was the thing is Democrats didn't think about this. Democrats weren't like they weren't like, oh, this is going to be so epic. We're going to give them everything that they want and then vote for it. And then they're going to shoot it down. No, they were like, oh, we're so ready to give them everything that they want because because we because it's an election year and so they get to have everything that they want it just happened to work out that way and i think this happened perfectly and here's why okay it's it's so perfect and this is why i call it a generational fumble because once again they weren't able to get a bill like this in the last 30 years the issue of immigration is going to die down it, it just will it will soon become no longer that big of an issue. Biden 100% would have signed this bill and he 100% would have shut the border down and 100% would have f***ed over millions of migrants. He was perfectly happy with that. He was under Obama, the porter in chief. Joe Biden has built more border wall than Donald Trump has, okay? Let's not sit here and act like he, this was some like massive 4D chess big brain play. He's just, he's just being conservative, okay? He's just being a Republican. He out Republican Republicans. And that was his goal to out Republican Republicans to make it not seem like he's he loves open borders or whatever uh, Republican talking point is out there right now. It was pure luck, but it, it turned out perfectly. OK, and here's why I believe it turned out perfectly. Biden and the Dems were able to outflank Republicans for the right. They were able to look stronger on the border than Republicans did because they're not, they because now everybody knows that they don't want to vote for any border bill because Donald Trump said he wants to run on it. So leaving it as an open problem, they can do the thing where they normally do, which is not try anything else that's more serious because that's just not what they do. And nothing happens. Literally nothing happens. One of the most conservative immigration bills don't get passed. The Democrats get to offset this issue and then blame Trump again. Israel doesn't get billions of dollars in aid to kill more Palestinian children. 
and nothing happens. It's actually the best possible outcome. The best outcome out of this is, was for nothing to happen because the worst outcome was for this to go through Congress and become even more conservative with the amendments and then pass bipartisanly. And then we just backslide into a conservative overtaking of, of the border right? Ukraine is still getting screwed, but at least that's, you know, that's, that's at, at least at this point, Ukraine getting screwed is, you know, that's, um, uh, that's the status quo for them right now. So at least it didn't get worse for them. It's just the status quo keeps happening of them getting screwed at the moment. I hope Ukraine's able to get more funding at some point, but this giving the conservatives everything that they want here at home, I don't believe is, is, is the way to do it. My personal opinion. Okay. My personal opinion. So it worked out perfectly. It's in a, it's a huge W for the Democrats by having literally nothing happen and they get heat off their back. So they don't. So people aren't complaining about them to do something because they can be like, look, we're we're con we're the most conservative uh, party in this country on this issue right now. They don't want to do anything. Look. And they're like and they're like punching each other in the balls about who lo who wants to suck Trump's dick like harder and sloppier right and people go damn i guess you're right <laughs> oh I, I guess i guess you're right i guess you're right and then and so the senate blocks it right the house came out house speaker uh, johnson came out to be like i hate this bill it's even worse than we expected we never want to pass this bill donald trump is my god and there's and there's nothing that we're going to do about this because you guys don't want to completely um, kill all migrants at the border. So this is lame. And I love Donald Trump. Obviously, that didn't go over too well. All of the Republicans in the Senate got really angry about it. A lot of the Republicans in the uh, in the House got really angry about it. And so his goal, instead of doing this, was to do something super epic instead, which was to impeach Secretary of Homeland Security Alejandro Mayorkas which failed. They were like, instead of passing a bill, we're going to be really angry at Mayorkas. And then it failed. They failed to, they failed to impeach him originally. They just completely failed to impeach him. Right. And they were stunned that he even brought it up for a vote because they didn't have the votes yet to be able to do something like that. The bad day just continually gets worse. Inside the leadership circle, there are plenty of doubts about his decision making and capability while being forced to begrudgingly execute his questionable strategies. And uh, among rank and file House GOP uh, lawmakers, there's a lot of people scratching their heads about where he's leading them off a cliff. Inshallah. That's my that's my that's what I hope personally. And so they shoot down the funding bill. All right. Now we're within a month of a government funding expiring. Oh, just so you know, also, the government might shut down because of this as well. Israel, Ukraine, Ukraine and Taiwan um, uh, could come over from the Senate a funding bill, which did actually, which they didn't touch either because they want because they don't want to give any money to Ukraine or Taiwan. And a lot of them don't want to give any money to Israel either. So any money going out to any other country right now is just out of the question. And they just they're just not going to send it out. They do the normal Republican thing where they're like, oh, we're spending this money on other countries. Imagine how much money we could spend on doing literally nothing here at home because they don't want to fund any infrastructure bills and they don't want to fund um, universal health care. And uh, they keep cutting back um, like uh, welfare and uh, welfare benefits like SNAP. And they don't want to fund like the child tax credit. And, like, imagine how little we could do with that money here at home, but we can't send it out because we could do like. Oh, can you imagine? We could do literally nothing. Imagine how much money we could spend on making poor people's lives even worse. Come on. We can't spend that money on on our international friends. Come on. Weird stuff. Think how many taxes for the rich we can cut. True. True. Absolutely true. It's 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 abs it's it's completely it's completely incredible. Right. As the lead Democrat negotiator proclaimed under this legislation, the border never closes. If this bill reaches the House, it will be dead on arrival. Johnson said Johnson said it will be dead on arrival. We will never pass this bill. OK, you will. We will never pass this bill. And so he wanted to pass other bills instead. But those bills didn't pass either. And so he's not taking up anything from the Senate. And nothing is able to get out of the house. 
and and they keep talking about how the Democrats are the ones who are like ruining everything, but nothing is happening for them and they're not passing any legislation because they literally can't because they were never meant to actually lead. OK, they never meant to actually lead. It's, it's crazy stuff. And so and so GOP members who who were like, this was our best deal ever to be able to over migrants which is one of which is one of their main goals they start seething like romney came out like was so angry about the fact that they weren't able to get anything passed i think the border is a very important issue for donald trump and the fact that he would communicate to republican senators and congress people that he doesn't want us to solve the border problem because he wants to blame it blame biden for it is really appalling mate romney said he added uh, but the reality is that there, there is a crisis at the border. The American people are suffering as a result, not really, no, uh, of what's happening at the border. And someone is running for president not to try to get the problem solved. There, there are other ones uh, that are like the, the, the falling of this is tragic. I hope no one is trying to take away. I hope no one is trying to take this away for campaign purposes. He didn't want to name anybody. I would encourage Chief Senate GOP negotiator James Lankford and other conservatives to produce a, a work product in which they will shortly allow conservatives like myself to review and take up and enjoy. This proposal will have had the utmost unanimous Republican support if it weren't for Donald Trump. And that's why and that's why Donald Trump being so f stupid has allowed Democrats to outflank Republicans from the right while doing their favorite thing ever, which is nothing. I love it. This couldn't have ended up better on this front. Couldn't have ended up better. Maybe in, in, in the realm of possibility, couldn't end up better. Now, just like passing um, uh, support for for Palestinians in Ukraine like that, that would be great. But I highly doubt something like that could get through Congress at the moment. And so that's where we are right now. They were able to go on and impeach Mayorkas. Uh, the Senate Republicans were like, we don't we literally could not give a shit less. We literally could not care less. We don't care. And so that went literally nowhere. And nobody's even you may not even know that that um, uh, uh, Secretary of Homeland Security Mallorca has got impeached in the House because nobody cares. Actually, nobody cares. It, it's quite wild if you think about it. Not even Mallorca's care. I don't think even they care. Honestly, it's it, it's what it's wild stuff, I must say. So nothing has happened. Status quo continues which is better than things just continually getting just getting worse with this bill passing huge w actually genuinely a generational fumble by the republicans where they had the entire they had basically the whole country at their back they had the wind in their sails to be able to get a lot of stuff out of the democrats and they were perfectly happy giving them almost everything they wanted and they and they fumbled and they fumbled completely genuinely remarkable i must say just like when trump could have gotten a full border wall in exchange for a, a daca fix that he turned down and led to the longest government shutdown in history uh yeah yeah that one was bad he lost that didn't he? he even he even lost that government shutdown at the end right he was hoping that he was going to win it at the very end and he just lost it's really funny led to the longest government shutdown in american history after turning down a really good bill for himself and at the end of the day, Joe Biden, Pat, like Joe Biden and Obama put up more border wall than he did. I think that's the craziest thing in the world. Joe Biden and, and Barack Obama put up more border wall than him. They offered him to have more border wall in exchange for do, they offered him to do something they were already doing in exchange for like for for something actually pretty small. Then. He turns it down, goes for like the longest government shutdown to ever exist, loses, cries about it, and then pretends it never happens and goes on to, to have like his predecessor put up more border wall than him. He's so cooked. They just want to make a Christian jihad. Y'all Qaeda. Dude, did you know that the you know that the GOP hates this um, Mike Johnson motherfucker? You know, they absolutely hate this this guy. Holy shit. It's so funny.
It's actually really funny. Some of you all haven't seen this article before, and I'm going to tell you when you see it, it's going to be really funny. You know how um, Mike Johnson, we did a whole video on him. If you haven't seen it, you should check it out. He's like the he's like a super duper mega triple um, like religious guy. He believes that uh, the the they, we should replace the Constitution with the Bible. And actually, like he believes in Yal Qaeda, like there needs to be that we need to completely usurp America and just run it as basically basically like as like christians his version of christian sharia law like catholic sharia law that that that's his goal um at the end of the day and he finally is in one of the most important levers of power he he stumbled his way into there at some point right and now and now he's like it's time my time has begun right after oh i forgot to mention this holy crap i, I forgot to mention this if, if there's an editor watching you got to put this in so it's it's incredible after they come after they said that they were not going to take up any bills from from the senate because donald trump hasn't hasn't signed off on any of them yet they tried to pass bills themselves they completely failed barely i don't think even think they made it out of committee actually never made it to like real floor votes impeached mayorkas but nobody gave a shit and then and then you know what they did after that we're going on a vacation. And then they went on a two week break. They went on a two week vacation. The house isn't even in session right now. It's not even in session right now. Cause they went on, they went on vacation. They were like, we've done, we've done a, uh, a, a hard job at doing literally nothing. And then they went on, uh, went on vacation for two weeks. <laughs> Nobody wants to work anymore. <laughs> And then they went on vacation for two weeks. They're on vacation right now. Okay. It's yeah, they got sleepy. It's nap time. Nappy time. <sighs> me, 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 me. That's them right now. It's crazy. It's insane. And so after they went on vacation, this is a little follow up to this. Basically, this is like a little a little after credit scene after the massive thing that happened after they did this. It was led by um, you know, Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson. All right. After they're like, I think we hate this mofo they they found out that they really do hate this because on while they were on vacation from doing literally nothing he decided to turn the vacation into like bible camp he, he decided to turn it into bible camp what yes he he was like i'm so glad you all came here today and he started preaching at them wait it's a group vacation oh yeah it's a group vacation it's not like a separate vacation it's like it's imagine like imagine like um like like a school trip that you would take in in like middle school that you would have um a permission slip for they went on a field trip they went on a vacation field trip yes actually and so he was, and then they asked him, how do we plan on keeping the, uh, like a, a Republican majority in 2024? And he said, I was praying really hard and God told me that we will keep a majority. Mike Johnson invoked God in a GOP presentation on keeping the majority. It didn't end. It didn't land well. Speaker Johnson delivered a presentation on the uh, over the weekend and the GOP retreat that although was billed as a map to keeping the House majority took on a surprisingly religious tone, according to two people in the room. Johnson's private remarks to a small group of Republican lawmakers in Miami. Yeah, they went to Miami. Yeah. Mandarin Oriental Hotel over the over the weekend alarmed both people who addressed the speech on condition of anonymity rather than outlining uh, a specific plan to hold and grow the majority. What, what they have once once again one of the slimmest majorities to ever exist um, in American history in the Congress and has only gotten slimmer since um, <laughs> my caucus is slim and it keeps getting slimmer. Uh, that's only gotten slimmer ever since they had to kick out. Oh fuck! What's his name? what's his name george santos and and they lost a and they lost the special election in new york's third district uh third uh u.s house district and now another guy got into office who's a democrat instead the interesting thing is that that guy actually beat a a former idf officer that person maybe could have that person may have could, could have tortured to death seven billion palestinian children it was quite remarkable honestly Thankfully, they were they, thankfully they were defeated. Uh, they don't have great opinions on on like Israel that I would personally agree with, but they beat an IDF officer. That's that's something that that really is something. George the Santos. 
please don't be cringe new guy. <laughs> I think you'll never hear about him again. He'll be one of those Democrats that you only you only see when scrolling through um, uh, the minutia of who voted for what. And he's just going to vote party lines and you'll never hear about him ever again. That's probably that's probably what's going to happen. He's going to melt into the Democratic caucus and then you'll never hear about him ever again. The Louisiana Republican showed slides to the members of his elected leadership committee uh, team in a bid to tout the party's prospects of hanging onto its two-seat majority in November. Johnson, a devout Christian, attempted to rally the group by discussing the moral decline of America. Holy crap, he was doing like a, a 2016 far-right YouTube video towards them, uh, to them, focusing on the decline of church membership in the nation's shrinking religious identity. According to both people in the room, the speaker continued, uh, sorry, contended that, uh, that when one doesn't have God in their life, the government or state will become their guide. Referring back to Bible verses, both people said, they added that the approach fell flat among some in the room. I'm not at church, one of the people said, describing Johnson's presentation as horrible. <laughs> oh, he's he's like, what is this bullshit, man? I don't care about Jesus. I want money. And <laughs> Yo, this is crazy. Bro thinks people actually believe that garbage. It is really funny. They're like. He's he's like, I can't believe they actually believe this bullshit. They, they've been he's they're so conditioned to have fake Christians who only talk about that stuff, who only talk about the Bible in, in public for um uh for for like evangelical votes. They were genuinely shocked when the guy actually believes it in um uh, where the guy they're being led by one of them. It's money, money. I think I think what he was trying I think I know what he was trying to do but failed in the execution of it he was trying to bring us together the sermon was uh so long he couldn't bring it back <laughs> to make the point bro he actually just started preaching at them third person in the room who was close to Johnson said the speaker dipped into historical and religious points for ha- perhaps a third of his presentation arguing that the party needs to save the country that people who speak on condition of anonymity about private about the private gather uh, sorry who spoke on condition of anonymity about the private gathering said Johnson also talked about polling on the border how president biden compares to donald trump on various issues and the house's uh, uh, house gop's core message um, the weekend retreat was featured a notable, t- uh, featured notable tension between GOP conference leaders and the Freedom Caucus, uh, who argued in Miami that Johnson needs to lead Republicans in the direction that was favored by conservatives. Lisa Mc- uh, uh, McLean pushed back, questioning if God, who had voted uh, to oust former Speaker Kevin McCarthy, uh, the, the person did, I don't think they mean God did, Uh, would let Johnson lead or if he would block him whenever he disagreed with the GOP leader's approach, according to all three people uh, who addressed the speaker's presentation. Conservatives have blocked legislation from being considered on the floor uh, several times this term. Yup. (laughs) Would God let you lead? So God wants you here, boy. Is that true? Is that true? All right. So there we go. Very interesting stuff. Oh, sorry. I didn't see you there. If you're enjoying the content, hit the subscribe button. If you don't, it'll make Boo very sad. I know a bunch of you who are watching are not subscribed. Join the frenzy. You won't regret it. (laughs) Thank you, Boo.